Hey guys, Eri is here. Happy New Year and welcome along to another video. So in this video we're going to cover the latest Nations Cup race here on GT Sport. It was a crazy combo and there was a unique opportunity for me to drive a car that I absolutely love so I had to go for it. And the race was as advertised. Unique and absolutely crazy. But you'll see that we aren't at the Nations Cup venue right now. We're back at the Red Bull Ring for last week's daily races. And that's because I decided to do a couple more on my main account. After the success of last week's stream, everything was nice and clean and we were getting good results. So I thought, you know, I'd just carry that on and do a couple more to top up my driver rating. Well, that was a big mistake. I clearly used all my luck during the stream because the two races I did did not go my way. Due to the sensitivities of the penalty system at the moment and the lack of sectors at the Red Bull ring once you get a penalty to recover, my SR went down to 80. Yes, 80. One less SR point and I would have dropped down to A. But this is the year of positivity on the channel. The world has been through enough in 2020. The last thing you guys need to hear once you click on my video is more negativity and me moaning about things. So it is what it is. So I figured going down a 10 km straight would be a safer method to build back up my SR than trying to build it up here at the Red Bull Ring again or the Nordschleife at night. Those true tracks are SR's kryptonite, as we all know. So I bit the bullet knowing I was going to be in a lower lobby and we cracked on with the race. Now I'm not going to show you any practice because I only did around two laps I think. There was no real need to do any practice in this one so I did those and then we went straight into the lobby. And as anticipated, after RSR was destroyed we find ourselves in a lower lobby with some familiar faces though who must have had an equally as poor a time as us. I've chosen the F50 as you can see firstly because it's beautiful and any opportunity to use it I will jump all over and also it's a rocket off of the line which is an important point as I'm not always that good in quality to say the least as we all know so it will really help us out there and our goal is to use this car choice to latch onto the front group and then see how my luck goes for the rest of the race and see if we can pull anything off. So moving on to the quality session and as we come out here Due to the length of time in this one, we were going to have only one shot at doing a lap. It was a four minute odd lap, and weirdly we had an eight minute session. So not the five minutes or the ten minutes that we're normally used to, eight. Not really sure why that is. But anyway, I was of course looking to place myself in the slipstream, and it's fairly self-explanatory as to why I needed that, but it is incredibly important to have the slipstream on this track, probably the most important in the game. We find ourselves alone though, so I lifted off a little. I didn't want to too much and found ourselves some gentlemen to work with, a pair of Spaniards who were in Supras, which was a good thing too. As those cars had a quicker top end than the Ferrari I was in, one would have been fine, let alone the two we had to work with. So this should pay dividends. And we got to work and we actually picked up a straggling Brit along the way who clearly had an issue it was a bit sketchy going around the huge bank corners in this group, but all in all, I thought we worked well together. And what's funny about this track is that once we enter the final corner, any allegiances and any teamwork we may have done previously completely goes out of the window. It's every driver for themselves. I come across the line note with a 4 minute 23.516, which was, even with all that working together, only good enough for 10th. We were 1.7 seconds off the pace, but I of course anticipate that quality might have not gone well for us based on previous form and chose this car as the contingency and the leveller. So let's see if the torque that it has from the rolling start to top speed is enough to pull us into contention here as we move into the race itself. Here we go then, as the race countdown timer finishes here, we're going to see exactly why I chose this car. Whilst it may be a couple of miles an hour down on top speed in comparison with the Supra, as you can see here, it takes much less time to get there. I'm up to ninth almost immediately having overtaken the Spaniard and I'm following another Ferrari who is making similar progress. So as we still accelerate here, you're going to see I'm in the slipstream of another Supra who is just a sitting duck. There's nothing he can do and the car choice for us was absolutely perfect. 
The difference in getting to top speed made up for our poor starting position and now we're exactly where we want to be, in and amongst the leading pack. Now it's just a case of staying with them, not getting hit off or getting any silly penalties and just working together really until that crucial final corner where as you saw in qualifying everything goes out the window. Now even though this is a quick one let me introduce the race here. This race is the next round of the Nations Cup. I never usually do these but as I mentioned this was a good way to boost my SR back up if I can keep it clean of course that is and I wanted to drive this car the F50. It's only a two lap race as you can see, tyres and fuel aren't an issue, it is just a simple 9 odd minute 250 mile an hour sprint. And due to the nature of it, this is pretty much what happened the whole way round and rather than showing you it, we're just going to cut straight to the run down to the final corner. Now I didn't want to waffle on any more than I usually do, when there's nothing to share guys, there's nothing to share. So we're going to rejoin the action in the final corner, this is the last bit of the bank section before we get to the line. As I've mentioned before and as we saw in quali, everything goes out the window here. All teamwork has completely gone off and good old Gran Turismo driving is back. Now I'm on the inside here waiting to see if someone moves down so we can jump in their slipstream. Our Ferrari of course isn't the quickest in the straight line but what we don't want to happen is just what happened there <laughs> to the guys behind. So someone's off and now it's just a straight run down to the line. I've got the slipstream but I've got it a little bit late. It's going to be close. Touching guys we cross the line and we're going to come home in fifth place less than one tenth of a second behind the leader that is just such 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 a close finish unbelievable i even got the fastest lap as well so i've been making a bit of a habit of that recently so happy with that we got 500 dr here as a result but we're only up to 92 sr i need to do some more work to get this up to 99 before the next manufacturer series race which is dragon trail gardens 2. In the Mustang it's going to be difficult enough, let alone being in a lower lobby thanks to my safety rating. So to complete the story, I chose to try and get the ASI needed for the next race at the Red Bull Ring. Now I chose that over the Nordschleife because I feel I've got more chance of keeping it clean here. And I managed to finish penalty free and even gained a couple of DR. So now I'm back up to 99 SR and ready to take on Dragon Trail Gardens, which I'll cover for you, of course, in the next video. But for now, guys, that is going to be the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do hit that like button and make sure you're subscribed if you haven't already. Also, if you want to help the channel out by using my links to buy Fanatec gear, it would be very much appreciated. But thanks again so much for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.